So this is my front door and I made a video when I was going through the letters to the church in Philadelphia and of the Laodiceans because you're talking about the same concept, one on a macro level and the other on a micro level, meaning one on a a global level for all believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the letter of the church in Philadelphia. He says, Behold, I have set before thee an open door which no man can shut, and shutteth with no which no man openeth. This is the door into the kingdom. For those who are unsaved, the door is closed, which is what the letter to the church of the Laodiceans is describing, a closed door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open unto me, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. That is what the letter to the church of the Laodiceans is talking about, is individuals who have not made the commitment to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. They are behind a closed door, and Jesus is coming to them to offer them a new covenant relationship. Demonstrative of the bridegroom coming to the home of the intended bride to offer a marriage covenant. The other side of that is the letter to the church of Philadelphia. He says, Behold, I have set before thee an open door which no man can shut, and shutteth which no man can open it. When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved, there's an open door. We go into the kingdom. And that letter goes on to describe that our citizenship in the kingdom is permanent. There is a great understanding that comes with simply closing a door and opening a door and looking at these in relationship to the letters. Oh, well, if there's a closed door, then that means Jesus isn't bid entry. You're opening that and bidding him entry, which means you're inviting him to come into your heart. And when you've done that, there's an open door into the kingdom. This is specifically what Revelation 4.1 says. There was a door opened in heaven. And I heard a voice as of a trumpet talking with me saying, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Philadelphia and Laodicea are opposite sides of the same coin. Philadelphia is those who have already walked through the open door into the kingdom. And they have been granted permanent heavenly citizenship in the kingdom. And they shall not go out no more, which means it is irrevocable. The opposite side of that is Laodicea, who is standing behind a closed door. Jesus is knocking requesting them to bid him entry so that he can come in and sup with them, which is partake of the bread and wine, which are tokens of acceptance of the new covenant. It is the second part of the ancient Jewish wedding ceremony. The first is the bridegroom going to the home of his intended bride to offer the marriage covenant. He knocks on the door. If they open and invite him in, they go through the terms of the covenant. And if they agree to it, they sup. They break bread. I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. The first aspect of the new relationship is acceptance of said relationship into the betrothal stage, and that gets you the open door. I hope this makes a little bit more sense to people when they're going through those last two of the seven letters of the seven churches, because I got reamed for judging the Laodiceans as unsaved, but that's what the imagery shows. Not that every single person in Laodicea was unsaved, but that the specific group to whom he is referring to is standing on the side of a closed door, not an open door. These people have not accepted Jesus into their heart and have not been granted access into the kingdom via the open door. That's the whole point, is it's showing the opposite side of the individuals who haven't made the choice. And the individuals, once they make the choice, become part of the body who comprises the spiritual temple and holy habitation of the Spirit to the Lord. A body fitly joined together that Christ is clearly not going to spew out of his mouth. So I'm not judging anyone as saved or unsaved. I'm, I'm reading the Bible and saying, oh, they're standing behind a closed door. That means they're not granted access into the kingdom via the open door. The open door and the closed door are illustrative of salvation. Those standing behind a closed door do not have it. Those standing in front of the open door have it. 
The same thing that the ten virgins represent in Matthew 25, the two groups of people that will exist on earth when Jesus returns at the second coming. One saved, wise, wisdom, and attribute of the Spirit. The other foolish do not have the Spirit. And what happens to them? The door is shut on them. They do not get to go into the kingdom. That is the big picture for the differences between the letter of the church in Philadelphia and the letter of the church of the Laodiceans. The Laodiceans are individuals who have not made the decision to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Thus, they are standing behind a closed door. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. And uh, white raiment, that the shame of their nakedness will not appear, which means that their sin is presently uncovered, which means they haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They haven't been clothed with the shed blood of Christ, the, the lamb skin, like Adam and Eve's sin was clothed in the garden. Before it was clothed with Christ's sacrifice, or the foreshadow of Christ's sacrifice, they were naked and ashamed. The Laodiceans are being counseled to, to obtain from him white raiment that they may be clothed, that the shame of their nakedness do not appear. So I hope this makes a little more sense to some people and they stop thinking that I'm judging people. The Laodicean church doesn't exist anymore. So even if I wanted to judge them, I can't. I'm reading the scripture and saying, oh, they're standing behind a closed door, which means they don't have access into the kingdom. And Jesus is trying to get them to a point where they do have access to the kingdom. That's the whole point of that letter. Preaching the gospel, which leads to salvation, which is what we should be doing in the interim between now and Revelation 4.